What's up everybody, welcome back to yet another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be going over kind of a series of how we can make player dashboards in Python. And these dashboards really can be used for player dashboards or they can be used for some sort of like match review dashboard. Really it's anything that you want it to be and it's a great tool to have in your skill set. And especially if you can automate that, which I'll show you kind of how to get started with that in this tutorial. But it's gonna be a series of videos. I'm not sure how many videos yet, but it's probably gonna be between three to four videos, maybe five videos, depending on how much I do. But anyways, we're just gonna be using Python for this. And as well, we're gonna be using something called the grid spec. So grid spec allows you to create subplots which is essentially you can create a bunch of plots, but you can edit where they're at in the figure because normally they're just squares and they take up one axis, but grid spec allows you to kind of edit where they are and kind of how they span, the width of them, the height of them and everything. So it's really cool and it's a really cool tool to have. If you haven't already and you really like uh, football analytics and sports analytics, be sure to join the Discord below. We have over 500 members now of people who are there willing to help with any sort of thing, with code, analytics, feedback, visualizations, any sort of theory, anything that you need help with. There's a ton of people in there. 500 people is really a ton and some really smart people. So be sure to join that. The link is in the, um, whatever, the link's in the thing below, the description below. So as well, you can, if you want to follow along and have the visual representation of what I'm doing, I do have all this will be linked to my GitHub. So you can download the GitHub files. It's just under the repository player dashboards. You can download that and then you can download these files. You can work with them on your own. So without any further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, so what we're gonna be using is we're just gonna use a couple packages. This first video is just gonna be an introduction to what is grid spec and how we can use it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna import pandas as PD. So pandas is a good data manipulation data, kind of allows you to work with data. And then as well, we're going to import NumPy as MP, so NumPy allows you to create numbers and arrays and all do math basically. And then as well, we're gonna be using a package called Seaborn, and we're gonna say import Seaborn as SNS. So Seaborn is just a visualization package in Python. It's gonna allow us to make it, we're gonna make a box plot as part of this. And as well, we want to import matplotlib. So we're gonna say import matplotlib dot pi plot. So we're gonna use the pi plot uh, package in matplotlib as plt. And then as well, what we're gonna do is we're going to import grid spec. So we're gonna say from, sorry, we're gonna say import matplotlib dot grid spec as grid spec. So this is gonna allow us to import all the packages we need and everything. So we're gonna do that and then we're just going to create an array of numbers. So you can just type this in. We're gonna create a variable called X so that we can plot these later. So we're gonna say X equals np.random.randint. And then we're just gonna say one comma 101 500. So what this is doing just really quick, this is creating a random list or array is what it's called. And it's using NumPy, it's creating a random list of integers that range between one and 100, and the list is gonna have 500 numbers in it, essentially, is what's going on here. So we can run this, and then, I mean, I can show you what X looks like real quick. As you can see, just a bunch of random numbers between one and 100, and there's 500 of them. I'm not gonna sit here and count because that would bore you to death, but I don't know, maybe it wouldn't. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you first kind of an intro to grid spec and kind of what's going on behind the scenes. So to create a grid spec figure, all we need to do is we just need to say fig equals plt.figure, and then we'll throw in our fig size as well. We'll say fig size equals, I mean, we can do like 10 by 10 for now. We'll do 10 by 10. And then as well, we want to say constrained underscore layout equals true. 
And then the next thing we need to do is we actually have to create the grid spec figure. So we're going to say GS, so grid spec equals fig with one G, fig dot add underscore grid spec. And then in here, in the parentheses, we need to identify how many rows and how many columns we want to have. So we're going to make one that's three by four. So we're going to, so three rows, four columns. And we're going to say n rows equals three. And then we'll say n calls equals four. So we're going to essentially create a figure with a grid spec subplots, essentially, that's gonna have three rows, four columns of axes. So we can run this, and right now it's just gonna return nothing blank. It's gonna say figure size with zero axes. So what we need to do now is we actually have to go and add those axes one by one. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a bunch of axes, and the easiest way I like to do this is just by saying AX1 equals fig with one G again, dot add underscore subplot. And then on the inside of the parentheses after subplot, we're gonna put GS and then the brackets. And then you need to put in essentially inside these brackets where you want it to be on the grid spec. So the row and the column. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you essentially this, and then we will kind of manipulate them a little bit. So we're gonna make 12 axes, we're gonna say zero, so it's gonna be in the first row and the first column, so zero comma zero. And just so we're all aware, Python starts counting, and most um, programming languages start at zero. So zero is the first, one is the second, it's kind of just how programming works. And then what we want to do is just so we can track everything, we're going to say ax1.set underscore title. And then we will just pass in essentially a string of what grid spec location it is. So this one is zero comma zero, just like that. So now what we need to do is we need to copy this 12 times so that we have the number of rows and the number of columns that we need. So we'll do this, we'll just hit copy. So on, for me, it's command C, control C, and then we will just paste this 12 times. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so this is essentially our 12 axes, but right now, if we plot them, they're all, it's gonna say, you're gonna get a bunch of errors because they're all plotting on the same axis location, essentially. So what we wanna do is we wanna edit these row and column numbers so that they're plotting on all 12. So we'll start with the first four, we'll switch this to AX2. So it's AX2 and AX2. And then we want to still be in row zero, but we want to be in the second column. So column one is the number. And then we're just gonna keep doing this to all of them. So on the third axis, it will set to zero comma two. And then as well, be sure that you're changing the titles just so you can kind of track where they're at. Then we'll do AX4 and then just kind of do the same thing, go zero three. And then after you've done the first row, so these are all the first row and we can kind of plot them again. So now you can see we have a row and, but these ones are all not showing up because they're still being plotted over the air. So what we're gonna do now is instead of switching the second number, we're gonna switch the first number. So if we switch this and do one zero, that means it's in the second row. So technically, since remember since we're in Python, we start counting from zero. So second row and then zero first column. So we will do this and then we'll just keep doing this again, but we wanna be first row, but then we wanna be in the second column. So we'll say one, so one, one. And then we'll switch our title and then we wanna go back and we wanna do one, two. So we'll do this. And then we want to be one, three. So that takes care of the second row. And then we just wanna move same thing into the third row. So we'll say th or two comma zero. So just leave the zero. And then we'll switch the title just so we can track it. And then it's two comma one. So two, one. And then two, two, 
So I'm kind of going, going kind of slow, but I think it's just a good to be able to show you the process of doing this. Sorry, two, three. So that takes care of our third row. So now we can plot this, no errors as you can see. And we now have a grid right here of 12 different axes. So now that's how we kind of just create the axes. And what we can do is we can now start plotting on these individual axes if we want. And we can kind of start changing kind of the size of them. So what we're gonna do is we are going to switch these two boxes and we're gonna merge them into one. And the way we do that is we actually just wanna remove this axis completely. So this zero one. And what we're gonna do is, we're, so we're gonna delete zero one. And then we have to look at our, this box and say, okay, we want it to be in the zero row. So we're gonna leave the row number, but we want it to cover zero and one. So how do we do that? So what we do is we switch this zero and we put a colon and then one, or sorry, two. And I'll explain why. So in Python, this kind of thing right here is called slicing. And what we're doing when we're slicing is we're telling it, okay, so we want, it might be easier if we say we put a zero in front of this just to kind of demonstrate what's going on. So the first part of the slice is the column we want to start at. And then the number after the colon is how many columns we want to go up to, but not including. So since we want to go these first two columns, zero and one, but we don't want to include the second, we're gonna say zero, one, but don't include the second. So that's kind of what that means. You could also, since we're starting at the very beginning, we could get rid of the zero, means the same thing, but I'll leave the zero just for demonstration purposes. And then if we run that now, we can see that we now have an axis that covers those two columns in the first row. And we can also do the same thing vertically. So say we want to do this one right here, so one zero and two zero. So we're gonna delete our two zero axes, which is this axis down here. And I just realized I did not change any of these right here but it still worked. So make sure that you're changing all of these. It'll still work, but to allow us the customization that we need, you have to make sure that you change all of the axes so they're different numbers. Otherwise, probably gonna run into some errors and you'll be really frustrated because that's what I did for like the first 12 minutes, not 12 minutes, 12 hours of trying to make these. But anyways, back to where we were. So we wanna go, we wanna do these two columns right here. So we wanna do one zero and two zero. So we're gonna use the one zero and we need to delete the two zero axes. So if we come up here, that is AX9 and AX9 is two zero, two zero. So we will delete it. And then right here, this is where we can kind of start to see some more slicing. So we find one zero so one, what we're doing is we want the first column all the way up to the last column. So we'll say one, and then if we do this colon right here, it'll say we want to start with one and then we wanna go all the way to the end. You don't wanna put a number after that because it's gonna be technically out of range because the number won't exist. So we'll do one colon, and then we want it to be in the only in the zero column, so our first column, so we'll say zero right here. So we can run this, and now we can see that we have this grid spec right here, this subplot, and we have this subplot. So now that we have the subplots figured out, we can actually start kind of plotting a little bit on top of these subplots. I'll just kind of do an introduction to one of them. So we're gonna plot a box plot in here. And what we can do is we come down here just below AX1 and we say box plot. So this is how we do it in Seaborn. We can just say box plot equals SNS.boxplot. And then we pass in our X equals X. And then we just say AX. So we have to tell it which axis we want to plot on. AX equals AX1. Plot it. 
And there you go, we now have a box plot inside of this axis. Say we wanted to plot some sort of scatter right here. We could also, we come down to the next one. So we find AX3. We could rename all the axes if we want. I just don't until the very end, usually. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come down here and normally in matplotlib, you would say plt.scatter and then you would pass in the points. But now since we have actual axes, what we can do is we can just use those axes to plot. So we say ax3.scatter and then we just pass in like one, one. And now after that runs, we now have a scatter on top of this axis. So this is axis three and we can use that and kind of the same theory goes along for all the other ones. If we wanted to plot on AX12, for example, we could say AX12 dot scatter and we could do like five comma two. And it will plot it, it'll change the axes right here. We'll get into kind of how to plot different things on different axes and how to kind of plot, for example, pitches and, you know, dashboards, or not dashboards, pitches and shot maps and all the different things on top of these different axes. But for now, it's just kind of good to understand what's going on behind the scenes and how you can kind of manipulate it and kind of visualize what's going on. So hopefully this made sense. If it didn't really make sense, go check out the documentation for it. And if you need to rewatch this video, just so you can kind of grasp. I think the hardest part for me was to figure out the slicing. It's good to be able to plot all of them out first. So you kind of see, okay, this is what's in this column. This is what's in this row. And so you can kind of manipulate it to be how you want. And then we'll go into, in the next video, we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you how to kind of set up all of your kind of functions and your different and just everything that's going on behind the scenes. And then in the third video, we'll get into plotting everything. So thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to click on the next video, which I'll link right here somewhere. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.